The story of stuff is forceful. To get what we want, we have created a large linear system that depletes forests, tears down mountains, empties lakes, erodes the land, desiccates oil fields, abuses the atmosphere, and exploits the poor in third world countries. As a byproduct of this perverse system, people produce trillions of tons of trash, car, junkyards, smelly sewage, and air pollution. This is the price the earth pays for all the stuff we buy and throw in the trash. In fact, the story of stuff is so compelling that it invites us to take a harder look. So let's build a cybernetic model of the system that produces all of this. Human life on earth is a never-ending process in constant evolution. It starts with a world with a given amount of resources. The process starts with the extraction of materials and energy which come in different forms and pumping them into the system. We have to build infrastructure to deliver these materials. Then we start the transformation process. We have huge production lines in factories of all sizes. The whole process implies movement and therefore depends on transportation of some sort at every stage. The goods produced go from warehouses to distribution all of which requires the support of personal services such as accountants, lawyers, doctors, chefs, etc. And so we arrive to the spending, buying, and consumption stage. After being used, stuff gets thrown away as trash. A small fraction is recycled and turned into new products. Another small portion is buried in landfills so that we don't have to see it. A lot of garbage is dumped in rivers and pollutes the oceans. The Pacific Garbage Patch is twice the size of Texas and continues to grow. 60% of all original rainforests are gone, while the rate of destruction is about an acre a second and climbing. The story of oil is even worse. Deposits in the Gulf of Mexico took 200 or 300 million years to accumulate and may be gone in less than 200 years, a million times faster. What has gone wrong? Large complex systems take a life of their own. Patriotic duty is not well suited to solve worldwide systemic problems. Wars target the destruction of resources. Global commerce externalizes costs. Poorly designed rule-based bureaucratic systems are hard to kill, as the banking crisis has shown. To many, a free market economy translates into shopping is good. Stafford Beer, father of management cybernetics, has said, the institution most needing reform to abide by cybernetic canons is government itself. This is what the whole system looks like at a global scale. Resources provide energy and materials that are extracted, transformed, transported, distributed, consumed. Waste and pollution are byproducts. Trash is incinerated, dumped in the open, buried, or discarded in rivers, lakes, and seas. The deadlier stuff is put in metal containers and stored forever with fingers crossed. What do we want from the system? Thomas Jefferson wrote, the pursuit of happiness, all sorts of human activities plus security, plus being free to do business, add development, growth, and reproduction. Please notice that today most of the output is meant to go back to rebuild the different processes of the system. For instance, rebuilding, repairing schools, roads, and bridges. 200 years ago, there was no awareness of global constraints and no complexity. Cleaner energy and transportation, plus recyclers and decomposers, must play a big role in helping clean this cycle. The sun can help. What is missing in this picture? Markets are an important part of good government, but cannot see or prevent harmful systemic effects fast enough. The whole process must have some sort of management or government to ensure no unwanted side effects. How do we connect the process to the management? First of all, we must realize that management and government are metasystems, higher controlled systems. They don't produce anything directly. They are information intensive, not energy intensive, and follow very different rules. The viable system model connects operations and management according to cybernetic control principles. 
and the structure repeats itself at every level, as is shown here. A closer loop reveals a vertical command channel in the center, a coordination channel to the right in the yellow triangle. The white and red star represents a direct audit channel. On the left with green borders is a channel that connects horizontally with the environment. In the late 70s, Harvard's system science pioneer James Grier Miller wrote a book on the functional similarities among living systems, as shown in this chart. His work validates our model for a self-sustaining world system. Stafford Bear's VSM also includes a protocol for collective decision-making, a computerized system for normative planning, strategic planning, and tactical planning, and an operations room for real-time management. To say that big business has government in its pocket is not the main problem. The potential energy for change exists, but it is dormant because self-indulgence is part of the consumer culture. Can we blame big business for seeking market share of reckless consumers? Governance requires thinking, creating, and expanding networks. Only networks produce thinking. If thinking is to be produced by a collective brain, then creating one requires deliberation, intensive exchanges of information that solve problems by successive approximation. Governance involves sharing information, setting goals, and new communication links, but most of all having the correct maps for navigating through the complexity. Internet offers a bypass to congressional feeble-mindedness. Computers can serve as variety amplifiers of responsible citizens. Only recursive mappings can beat complexity. Management cybernetics tells us how to redesign organizations so they become part of the circle of life and not a system for human extinction. The do's and don'ts that we are used to will have to change fast. Congressional committees are not effective managers of today's complexity. Each life function should have its own specialized elected officials or Congress, and they would decide on their own as to who would play a metasystemic role at the highest level. It should be obvious by now that the key to making humans preserve the environment is to restructure government to accommodate the cycle of life, not the other way around. Saving the planet has become an important collective issue. Cybernetics can help us understand how natural systems work and the rules we have to follow to comply with nature and still get what we want.